Hello and welcome to the 2019 Monterey and San Benito Counties Point in Time Count Training. Thank you for joining us in this important effort to improve the understanding of homelessness in Monterey and San Benito Counties. The count will be conducted in two primary phases, separating the count and survey efforts. We will share additional details regarding the methodology as this training continues. If you participated in previous point in time count efforts, you will notice that the 2019 count will be conducted in a similar fashion. If you are brand new to the count, welcome. We are excited to have you join us. In this training, we will cover the following. The purpose of the point in time count, the definition of homelessness used for the count, how to conduct the count, and reminders and next steps. There are several reasons why Monterey and San Benito counties conduct point in time counts. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, requires all communities that receive federal funding for homeless services to conduct a point in time or pit count of all persons experiencing homelessness during the last 10 days of January. Counts of people who are unsheltered, meaning living outdoors, in vehicles, tents, or other similar locations are currently required every other year. This figure shows the different components that the count includes to make sure all people experiencing homelessness in Monterey and San Benito counties are represented in the count. You will be participating in the general street count, which is highlighted in the middle box on this slide. The general street count is a visual count of people who are currently unsheltered and will take place during the early morning hours of Thursday, January 31st, before people begin moving through their day and before people staying in shelters leave the facility. Timing and coordination are important to avoid duplication, so areas surrounding shelter locations should be counted first. Rural regions and non-shelter areas may also be subject to special arrangements. We will discuss how your team should prioritize counting locations within your assigned count area, such as shelters, later in this presentation. The other components include the shelter count, the youth count, and the survey. The shelter count collects information on the number of people staying in shelter programs across Monterey and San Benito counties during the night of January 30th. The youth count, which focuses on counting unaccompanied young people under the age of 25 who are experiencing homelessness, will take place during the afternoon and evening hours of January 31st. Finally, the survey component is conducted in the two to three weeks immediately following the general street count. Surveys are conducted with a representative sample of people experiencing homelessness across Monterey and San Benito counties and provide us with a better understanding of what homelessness looks like in the region, including information on veterans, families with children, and people experiencing long-term homelessness. The federal definition of homelessness used for pit counts is as follows. Individuals and families who lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, including Individuals and families with a primary nighttime residence that is a public or private place not designated for or ordinarily used as regular sleeping accommodation for human beings. Here are some examples of what may be included and what is not included in the definition of homelessness used for the count. Although the people listed as quote unquote not included are precariously housed or otherwise at risk of being unsheltered, the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development or HUD does not include them for the purposes of this count. HUD considers individuals living in the following locations to be experiencing homelessness for the point in time count. Tents, makeshift shelters, streets, vehicles, parks, abandoned buildings, bus or train stations, airports, or camping grounds. HUD does not consider individuals living in these locations to meet the point in time count definition of homelessness. Couch surfers, double ups or overcrowding, rehabilitation or mental health facilities, jails, prisons, or those awaiting eviction or foreclosure. The general street count is a visual count of people residing on the streets, in parks and open spaces, in tents, in vehicles, in abandoned buildings, or in makeshift shelters constructed of tarps, cardboard, or other materials. The street count will be conducted while people are still in public shelters in the morning, which will help us have an unduplicated count of everyone experiencing homelessness that day. To avoid duplication, we ask you to count the areas surrounding shelters first. As a reminder, volunteers will not be paid for their time, nor will volunteers be reimbursed for their mileage. Guides, who are individuals who have previously or are currently experiencing homelessness, 
will be paid a cash stipend upon completion of their count route. This stipend includes $15 for attending an in-person training session the week before the count and $15 per hour spent working on count day. All guides are expected to attend an in-person training session the week before the count and will be provided a 2019 pit count referral card and training attendance card at their training. Guides will need to show this card to the deployment center captain after their team returns from the field in order to receive payment for attending training. All payments will be made by the deployment center captain after the teams return to the deployment center on the day of the count. Here you can see what to expect on the morning of the count. Guides and volunteers will arrive at 4.30 a.m. and the goal is to have you out the door and in the field as soon as possible so that your team has adequate time to cover your route. When you arrive that morning, you will first sign in with the deployment center captain and sign a hold harmless agreement. When everyone has arrived, you will do a brief training to review the data collection methods and safety protocols and then create teams of volunteers and guides. We will go into detail about how these teams are created in the coming slides. Once the teams are created, each team will be given their maps and tally sheets. Before leaving the deployment center, each team must check out with the deployment center captain so that we know which team is covering what maps and can keep track of who is in the field. We will also collect your team's contact information and give you the phone number of the deployment center captain so you can contact them with any questions while out in the field. When you have completed your count assignment, your team must return to the deployment center and check in with the deployment center captain. This is when we will collect and review your data, ensure everything is correctly recorded, and clarify with your team if there are any inconsistencies or questions. Upon completing the check-in process, guides will receive payment for their time spent in the field as well as their time spent attending an in-person training session. We expect all teams to return to the deployment center by 10 a.m. You may come back before that if you finish your map areas early. Please call us if you think you need to be out any later than 10 or if you need additional help to complete your assignment. We strongly encourage you to conduct as thorough of a count of your assigned maps as you can. On the morning of the count, you will arrive at the deployment center you signed up for or were otherwise assigned to. Here are some examples of what a deployment center might look like, which will include sign-in tables for when you first arrive, coffee or other refreshments, and checkout tables for when your team is ready to deploy. Here you can see how we will create our teams on the morning of the count. This process requires volunteers and guides to wait for their team assignment before deploying into the field. And we greatly appreciate your patience, flexibility, and cooperation during this time. The deployment center captain will match up one to two volunteers with a guide with lived experience of homelessness and will then assign each team two to three maps to cover on their route. We will try our best to send you to areas that you are familiar with, but please remember that we are responsible for covering the entirety of both counties and you may be sent to an area that you do not know as well. Your team might also be assigned to an area where you will see very few or zero persons experiencing homelessness. This data is very helpful to us and it is important that we cover every area to ensure we are not making any assumptions about where individuals experiencing homelessness are in Monterey and San Benito counties and to ensure that we conduct the most accurate and robust count possible. Please also be mindful that depending on how many volunteers and guides show up on the day of the count and the number of count areas that need to be covered, we may ask larger groups of volunteers to split into smaller groups to ensure a complete count. While we will make an effort to assign larger volunteer groups to areas that are next to each other, we may not be able to accommodate all requests and appreciate your understanding and cooperation. There are two types of participants on each team during the general street count, volunteers and guides. This slide outlines the difference between guides and volunteers. A guide is an individual who has previously or is currently experiencing homelessness and uses their knowledge to identify individuals experiencing homelessness during the general street count. They will guide their team towards locations in their assigned count area where individuals experiencing homelessness are likely to be seen and will help distinguish between safe and potentially dangerous situations. Guides are compensated for their time and contributions to the count in the form of a $15 per hour cash stipend. A volunteer will provide consultation and support in team decisions. They will be in charge of transporting their count team through their assignment and will help ensure that full coverage of the map is achieved. Please note that volunteers are not paid for their participation in the count 
nor do they receive gas or mileage reimbursement. Teams should note that because we are covering the entire geography of Monterey and San Benito counties, there may be instances where the guide is not personally knowledgeable about the specific route the team is covering. However, guides are still able to draw on their first-hand experience of homelessness to help identify potential locations or persons based on previous experiences and signs in the environment. All team members are in charge of ensuring the methodology is being followed and should designate one team member to be in charge of marking the tally sheet and one team member to, responsible for tracking the team's coverage of their count area. The next set of slides will outline how to use the data collection forms that you will receive on the morning of the count. Each team will be assigned to specific routes and given maps of these routes. Your route is outlined in bright blue. Please stay within the bright blue line. Often, the boundary of your route is a street. If the bright blue line is a street, count people on the inside side of the street or the side of the street that connects with the rest of your route. If there is someone moving back and forth across the street, you should count them. Please cover all areas. Be sure to drive or walk down every street. Count on both sides of the street unless it's a route border. Look for open areas. You may need to get out and walk. You decide the route you take. That route may depend on traffic or where shelters are. Be sure to cover areas around shelters first. It is a good idea to put an X on streets and areas once you've covered them, so you don't count them twice. If you are assigned to two contiguous maps, please be sure to outline a route that will easily take you from one map to the other. Be aware of the map number and the jurisdictional boundaries marked on your maps. You will need to record your data on the corresponding tally sheet. Jurisdictions are marked by different colors. In this map, you can see two jurisdictions, one in gray, representing unincorporated areas, and one in pink, representing Salinas. Here you can see an example of a San Benito County map. Just as in the previous Monterey County map, you can see two jurisdictions, one in gray representing unincorporated areas and one in orange representing Hollister. Again, you will need to record your data on the corresponding tally sheet for each jurisdiction. You will have a tally sheet for each jurisdiction, which is a city, place, or unincorporated area. Be sure to pay attention to where you are on the map and use the correct tally sheet for that area. Check both the map code and the jurisdiction before you record your data. This information is located on the top of your tally sheet. As you move along your route, be sure to check the map. Ensure you have not gone outside the boundaries of one jurisdiction into another and that you have not crossed that bright blue line. Once again, it is extremely important that your group records the data on the correct tally sheet for the correct jurisdiction and map. We will provide tally sheets for each of the colored areas on your map, so please be aware of where you see the individuals you are counting and please mark them on the correct tally sheet. We will review this again on the morning of the count when you have your maps in hand. It is possible that you will have only one color, but it is also possible that you could have two or three different colors. Let's look at some examples of how to fill out the tally sheet. You will fill out one line per person that you see. In the first example, you observed one individual who appeared to be a male in their 30s and was on the street. Under gender, you would bubble in M for male. Under age, you would bubble in 25 through 64. And under dwelling or vehicle type, you would bubble in street. In the next example, you observed a family of three that included two adults over the age of 25 and one child under the age of 18 on the street. You would fill in one line per person in the family and then fill in the bubble under the column that says family. On line one, you would bubble in M for male, bubble in 25 through 64, bubble in family, and bubble in street. On line two, you would bubble in F for female, bubble in 25 through 64, bubble in family, and bubble in street. On line three, you would bubble in F for female, bubble in under 18, bubble in family, and bubble in street. Upon tallying each individual, we also ask that you draw a circle around the family bubbles to indicate that these individuals are part of one family. Please note that for the purposes of the count, a family is defined as one adult present with a child under the age of 18. Listed here are some ways to identify vehicles that are housing individuals. We want to maintain a respectful distance, 
So please do not walk up and look inside the vehicle, knock on vehicle doors or windows, or shine flashlights into the vehicle. Instead, here are some signs to look for that can indicate whether somebody is living in the vehicle or not. A vehicle with windows that are fogged, partially open, or blocked, electrical connections or generators, screens or window coverings, items inside and outside of the vehicle, including household items, bags, or clothing, sounds of music or talking coming from inside the vehicle, and or that the vehicle is in a known safe parking location, which may be designated on your map. If you find a car, RV, or van that looks inhabited based on the signs detailed on the previous slide, but you cannot determine how many persons are residing in the vehicle, please record only the vehicle type, leaving the fields of gender, age, and family blank. The example on this slide features a scenario your team might encounter, a vehicle whose windows are covered and partially open with belongings on the outside of the vehicle. In this case, you would bubble in car under dwelling or vehicle type. Additionally, we ask that you record the last four digits of the license plate of each vehicle you include in the count. The reason we request that you document the last four digits of the license plate number is to help us avoid count duplication. Vehicles move quickly, and this helps ensure vehicles are not counted twice. The field for listing the last four digits of the license plate number is located on the back side of the tally sheet. Please make sure that the number of the row where you write the vehicle license plate matches the row number on the front side of the tally sheet. In this case, the car was marked in row one on the front side and row one on the back side. We take the privacy and confidentiality of people experiencing homelessness seriously. Please note that vehicles are not traceable or able to be tracked down using these numbers. Additionally, these numbers are only for the use of the research consultant team from Applied Survey Research and will not be shared with any persons organizations, or authorities outside of ASR. An encampment is defined as two or more tents or makeshift shelters that are grouped together. Here are two examples of encampments you may see on your route. In the first example, you observed an individual who appeared to be male and in his 30s outside a tent. You also observed a tent directly next to his with an individual who appeared to be male and in his 70s standing outside that tent. You would fill in one line per individual, so on line one, you would bubble in M for male, bubble in 24 through 64, bubble in tent, and bubble in encampment. On line two, you would bubble in M for male, bubble in 65 plus, bubble in tent, and bubble in encampment. Similar to how we designate individuals as part of a family, we ask that you draw a circle around the encampment bubbles to indicate that this is one encampment. In the second example, you observe three tents together, but do not see any individuals. In this case, you would fill out one line per tent or makeshift shelter. On line five, you would bubble in tent and bubble in encampment. On line six, you would bubble in tent and bubble in encampment. And on line seven, you would bubble in tent and bubble in encampment. Again, you would draw a circle around the encampment bubbles to indicate that this is one encampment. Safety is a top priority while out in the field. Please take note of the following items when you are conducting the count. Please be safe and do not take any risks. Do not approach individuals and ask them if they are experiencing homelessness. Please observe and tally only. Do not take any photos while in the field to protect the privacy of those being counted. Please keep all locations and information confidential and do not discuss them after the count. Stay with your teammates. Be respectful of those you are counting. If you have any problems or questions, call your deployment center captain. Once again, safety comes first for all count participants. If an area seems too unsafe to cover, do not enter it. Mark the area on your map to show to your deployment center captain when you return. Some of these areas will have special teams to cover them. Please do not advertise your count location and be sure to keep all information confidential after the count. We ask that you do not take pictures while you are on your route or return to locations discovered during the count process. It is extremely important that we respect those we are counting and that they have confidence in the point in time count process. We will review safety and confidentiality protocols again on the day of the count. If you have a true emergency, please call 911 and then notify your deployment center captain when appropriate. Here are a few tips on how to prepare for the count. Wear comfortable shoes and clothing. Dress warmly. Wear a jacket, sweatshirt, raincoat, gloves, hat, etc. 
Bring a car if possible. Bring a fully charged cell phone. Bring a flashlight. The count will happen rain, snow, or shine, so be sure to bring an umbrella or cold weather gear if necessary. And of course, be sure to get plenty of rest the night before. Here are a few tips on how to prepare for the count. Wear comfortable shoes and clothing. Dress warmly. Wear a jacket, sweatshirt, raincoat, gloves, hat, etc. Bring a car if possible. Bring a fully charged cell phone. Bring a flashlight. The count will happen rain, snow, or shine, so be sure to bring an umbrella or cold weather gear if necessary. And of course, be sure to get plenty of rest the night before. Thank you in advance for your participation in the 2019 point in time count in Monterey and San Benito counties. Please encourage your friends, family, and colleagues to join us this January by directing them to the volunteer registration link listed here. We couldn't do this without you, and we look forward to seeing you on January 31st.